Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, a local restaurant hosts a shrimp boil all for a good cause. We'll take you there. And South Bay residents audition for one of the biggest shows in town. Plus, a well-known restaurant closes its doors after more than 42 years of business. And you won't want to miss this one. Reporter Hibis Ahmed sits down with a Torrance resident who's been to every Olympic Games since 1932. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. A local restaurant closes its doors suddenly after 42 years. El Paso Cantina, located on Sepulveda Boulevard, recently announced their permanent closure. The once family-owned restaurant is now managed by Real Mex Restaurants, which operates more than 100 eateries and eight brands, including Chevy's, Fresh Mex, and Acapulco. On their website, restaurant officials stated they were unable to negotiate a new lease and despite the abrupt closure, employees from the restaurant would have the opportunity to join the other Real Mex locations. In a statement on their website, the company said saying goodbye to our loyal customers makes closing the restaurant very difficult and that they will miss the restaurant. El Paso Cantina has been a staple in the city and a historic landmark founded in early 1970s. The sister restaurant locations are El Chirito and El Chirito Grill, which are both located on the boulevard. Two suspects were booked for several counts of identity theft and commercial burglaries in Torrance and the city of Burbank. Burbank detectives arrested two suspects in Torrance after a U.S. bank employee at the Pacific Coast Highway branch noticed an ATM skimmer. The ATM footage showed the same suspects who were tied to three other Burbank ATM skimming incidents. The two suspects used stolen account information and created cloned ATM cards while also withdrawing cash from several ATMs around Los Angeles County. U.S. Bank and its customers lost a total of $85,000. There was also about $233,000 in decline transactions. Authorities say there are more than 50 victims who were affected from the incidents. A skimmer is a small device that scans credit card information from the magnetic strip. Police say that these suspects may also be linked to other similar crimes in Los Angeles County. The Torrance Police Department successfully accomplished a large operation that should decrease home burglaries in the city of Torrance and surrounding cities. The Torrance Police Department's gang detail led a three and a half year investigation that focused on residential burglaries in Torrance and surrounding cities. Most recently, Torrance Police, along with 18 police agencies, raided 28 locations that targeted members of the criminal street gang East Coast Crips. These members were arrested in the city of Torrance and counties of Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, and Ventura for committing residential burglaries. The investigation is being called Operation Moneybags, and detectives found that some of the profits from the burglaries were being used to obtain prescription narcotics, which were then resold on the streets of Los Angeles. The investigation resulted in 28 search warrants being served. 147 counts of residential burglaries were committed, 13 arrests made, 7 firearms recovered, and various amounts of narcotics and U.S. currency were also collected. Police say they have tied more than 50 gang members to the crimes. Authorities say these individuals we're committing burglaries two to four times a day and five days a week. And Torrance police were also busy making days brighter at a local elementary school. As part of Community Helper Week at North Torrance Preschool and Infant Care Academy, a group of officers stopped by to give children safety tips. An administrator from the school says this was an opportunity to show their support of the local police department, and students welcomed the officers with this banner. The preschool has been around for nearly 50 years. They are located on 182nd Street near Crenshaw Boulevard. Members of the Torrance Police Explorers Program brought home a big win recently. 25 law enforcement agencies were represented by their Explorer Post with approximately 325 explorers competing at one time. The event hosted by the Pomona Police Department is called Battle of the Badges. They're made up of team building exercises, physical fitness and different scenarios. These included a DUI investigation, an active shooter, a high risk warrant and many more. The Torrance Explorer Post 1047X won seven awards. It included first place in risk warrant, active shooter and unknown traffic stops. 
The program is youth-oriented and gives members an opportunity to explore the actual training and experiences of what it's like to be a law enforcement officer. To learn more about the Explorer program, you can call 310-618-5743. A local restaurant helped people chow down with a one-of-a-kind Sunday meal, all for a good cause. K-19 Public House hosted its first Sunday supper event, which they plan to continue each month. The event was all about a shrimp boil, and owner Demi Stevens wanted to make sure her business could lend a helping hand to flood victims in Louisiana. Ten percent of the proceeds made during the shrimp boil will go to victims, and Tito's handmade vodka also matched dollar to dollar. For Stevens, this event was close to her heart. There's a boyfriend in Louisiana, <laughs> so um, he uh, he lives there and well, has a house there. And um, although his house is okay, uh, most of what's around him is not. And the highway actually to get to his house is not okay either. So um, it was a real uh, it struck a real close to home. Family people that we know were out of their homes and are currently waiting to get them rebuilt. And uh, it was just devastating for a lot of people. And so we would come here ordinarily, but the fact that this also helps the people in Louisiana makes it even better. Customers enjoyed high quality seafood with corn and potatoes. Special drinks were also created. The Sunday supper event is set up for customers to meet new members in the community. You can follow Hey 19 on Facebook for their upcoming events. They are located at 4525 Calle Mayor in Torrance. Well, still ahead, exchange students enjoy one of their last nights in Torrance before heading home to Kashiwa, Japan. Plus, El Camino College unveils a new art exhibit at their gallery. But first, here's a look at the weather outside. I see my friends out there getting waves and talking about them and I know exactly what they're doing and what they're feeling and everything. It's like, it's hard. I was diagnosed when I was uh, 57. It was a surprise to me when they told me I had MS. It's like, you sure? Well, the idea is this is a uh, 360 degree virtual reality camera rig. Steve hasn't been able to ride a wave in way too many years, so now I'm going to ride a wave and we get to share it with him. Well, we're going to do something. Just put that on your head. Whoa. Oh, this is unreal. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Boom. Nice. Nice. This is fantastic. Yeah, let me set it up and you get another set ride. Up. Let's do that again. Welcome back for another year. American Honda hosted a fundraiser to help children across the South Bay in need of medical care. Reporter Jesse Pierre has the story. It's a sold out event with over a thousand guests dressed in their best evening wear, ready to eat, drink and fundraise. Hosted by Honda every year, community chair Karen Baker says 2016 marks a milestone. This year, it's really special because we've combined two events, our annual Evening Under the Stars with our For Our Children event, which is also celebrating its 30th year. We are very grateful to Honda. You know, we, we as a hospital uh, have received their generosity, but I think the community at large has really benefited. Millions of dollars have been raised over the years to help provide the best health care for children in the South Bay. But this year, proceeds will also help renovate Torrance Memorial Medical Center's North Patient Tower, which will house new pediatric units. With these new facilities, we will be moving all of our pediatrics and all of our intensive care into private rooms for the first time. Other beneficiaries include Providence Trinity Kids Care and Vistas for Children, Inc. We rely on on gifts from outside donations and Honda is one of the biggest ones and it's so important to help us achieve our goals. Nearly 35 vendors joined forces to make this event come alive. But one of the highlights was the soulful tunes of Kenny G. Why is this performance different from any other for you? 
Well, you know, it's Honda that's putting this on. You know, they, they're the ones that have got all the local uh, community uh, restaurants and, and whatever else they got here, and people come to to help out. And it's because Honda's opened up their doors. We're standing on their tennis courts. Yep. They turned it into a beautiful lounge area. Uh, the music wasn't bad. Wasn't it, bad. It, it wasn't bad at wasn't all. It wasn't bad at all. A gathering that brings a community together all for a good cause. Red Car Brewery, amazing. Kenny G, amazing. Yeah. Everything's amazing about this. And Honda, Honda does not, they put out all the stops. And all of the businesses here, all of the people here, this is a wonderful evening. And of course, the real reason that I'm here is to enjoy the beautiful sounds of Kenny G. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jesse Pierre. Thanks, Jesse. Providence Trinity Kids Care is the only pediatric hospice program in Los Angeles and Orange County servicing infants, children, and teens with life-limiting illnesses. Vistas for Children, Inc. serves special needs children in the South Bay and SoCal communities. This year, the Honda Evening Under the Stars event fundraised nearly $300,000. After a three-week adventure, eight students from Kashiwa, Japan, came together with their host families and friends for the last time before heading home. The Torin Sister City Association hosted a Sayonara banquet, giving guests and exchange students an opportunity to reflect back on their memories made here in Torrance. Now, despite a rocky start with some flight delays, the eight-member delegation and one adult leader enjoyed a chili cook-off with some square dancing, a trip to the Getty Museum, Hollywood Bowl, a Dodgers game, and they even visited a few local amusement parks. Well, this is certainly an evening of celebration. I suspect there will also be a few tears as it is also a time for goodbyes. Looking around this room, it is clear that this very special relationships have been formed, and I do think these are lasting friendships. The Sister City program started between Torrance and Kashua in 1973 with the goal of promoting friendship, goodwill, and understanding between the two cities. President of the Sister City Association, Warner Willoughby, says every year the program just keeps getting better. Recognize the host families say goodbye to the students that are, are coming here and just sort of a time to maybe reflect. It gives the host families a chance to go and talk about their guest that was here, sometimes the funny little things that happen, sometimes the very unique things that, little, that happen with them. The Student Cultural Exchange Program is sponsored by the Torrance Sister City Association. To find out how you can get involved, go to TorrenceSisterCity.org. The third annual South Bay's Got Talent auditions got underway as judges look for the best talent to showcase on the big night. Just a small town girl, living in a lonely world. From singers to dancers, various performers showed off their best talents to be selected for the annual regional talent competition. The show is open to all ages and different genres of performances. Six judges oversee the competition and the winner is chosen by the audience on the night of the event. This year is our third year and I think what's interesting is last year we had 50 people audition. This year we have over 70. Uh, I think the word is getting out that it's a fun event. <clears throat> it, it gives people the chance to perform on stage that may not otherwise get the opportunity to. And it's a chance just to, for people to show their, what they're passionate about. The show takes place on September 24th. Check out torrencearts.org for more information. While a popular brewing company in Torrance isn't cooking up food, they are making sure they, their patrons aren't going hungry. Monkish Brewing Company recently posted a list of food trucks scheduled to serve food on certain days of the week on their property, including the grilled cheese truck, brew wings, Paggio on wheels, and Choriman. They have dates throughout the month of September. Monkish Brewing Company opened its doors in 2012. They are located at 20311 Southwestern Avenue in Torrance. A one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art facility is using unique technology to train basketball players. There was a line out the door during Shoot 360's grand opening as people waited to participate in a free clinic. This opening marks the first location in California. Shoot 360 helps people get better at the game of basketball through technology and training. Not only does it have an NBA-sized basketball court, but offers personal training and team clinic sessions. 
It also has the latest technology called Shoot Away, which allows members to shoot mass repetitions and receive passes to different spots on the court with various speeds. Another high-tech piece is called NOAA, which measures the arc and depth of each shot taken while providing automatic feedback. We use machine vision, which is what NASA uses to dock the space shuttle. It's very, very accurate within a thousandth of an inch for what we do. So we're able to catch the ball in real time and we feed that back to people and both through audio and through video, visual feedback, and it's immediate. So they can make adjustments while they're shooting or ball handling to get them basically in, a, in what we call the perfect zone. After much research, the company chose Torrance because of its huge basketball presence. A trainer at the facility gave City Cable a tour, which included a ball handling station area, which has digital coaches. There is a monthly membership to use the facility. The other two locations are in Oregon and Washington State. For more information, you can follow them on social media and visit shoot360.com. A local organization and retailer partnered up to host a back-to-school event for families in need. Now in its 17th year, Sandpipers, along with Kohl's, helped nearly 73 underprivileged children, offering them new school apparel and accessories at the local department store in Torrance. It's part of its back-to-school shopping day, which the retailer has sponsored for the past nine years. Kohl's opened its doors before normal business hours for the event. Now each child received a $200 gift card by Sandpipers. Additionally, they were offered a 20% discount without sales, without sales tax. Sandpiper volunteers partnered with children, helping to select and choose school clothes, uniforms, and shoes worth more than $400 per child. And it sure felt like Christmas because the gifts kept on coming. Xerox Company also donated $1,000 towards lunch boxes filled with snacks. The back to school program started in 1999, and the organization says they love to make a difference in the lives of those who are working hard to overcome struggles. The 100% volunteer run organization is celebrating its 85th year of service. Its mission is to serve the community through philanthropic and charitable programs. In the last year, Sandpipers contributed more than $450,000 and countless volunteer hours to the South Bay communities. Now to learn more about the organization, go to sandpipers.org. A local college unveils a new art exhibit on campus. El Camino College's art gallery is presenting a display called Thread. It focuses on material and metaphorical aspects of thread. Fifteen artists are taking part in the exhibit and each have a distinct approach to Use to the use and subject of the concept. For some artists, thread can act as a connector between different elements or different worlds. The exhibition is open from now through September 22nd. El Camino College Art Gallery is open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Mondays and Tuesdays, from 2 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays and Thursdays. The gallery is free and open to the public. There's a new recall grabbing the attention of parents. Consumer Product Safety Commission released a new warning about a toy that could be dangerous. Dazzling Toys is recalling this toy shaped like a chicken because of its small plastic pieces that can pose as a choking hazard. The toy is called the Bump and Go Action Egg Laying Chickens, which comes in two styles. There have been no reports of injuries, but customers are urged to immediately stop using the recalled toy and Contact the company for a full refund. They have been sold online at Amazon and eBay. To get a refund, you can call 844-222-2812. Still ahead, Sports Desk anchor Byron Newsom gives us the latest on what's happening in the Torch Sports World. Plus, local residents share their love of the Olympic Games. But first, here's a look at the five-day forecast. This is the city where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, 
and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude! Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones. Welcome back, everybody. Here are some great events coming up. The Torrance Art Museum is opening a new art exhibit called Guildless Age starting September 3rd. The exhibit features various artists that explore the Los Angeles and California socio-political and eco-geographic landscapes. The opening reception is from 6 to 9 p.m. Plus, the Board of Equalization is sponsoring a free business resource seminar and expo at the Ken Miller Recreation Center on Wednesday, September 7th. You can stop in from 8.15 to 12.30 p.m. The fall sports season is kicking off, which means there must be a lot happening on the Sports Desk with Byron Newsom. That's right, Byron. What's going on this week? Coming up this week on the Sports Desk, football season is here, and our local high school teams are ready to pop some pads and make some noise on the field. Plus, the city of Torrance has more to offer than meets the eye. See what our city is doing to keep Torrance residents active all year long. Tune in to the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cable. Thanks, Byron. Well, one Torrance couple returns home from the recent Olympic Games in Rio, making it his 19th and her 12th Olympic Games. Torrance City Cable reporter Hiba Samad has more on this story. Starting from Los Angeles in 1932. And uh, the last one we had was in uh, Beijing. And now 94-year-old Harry Nelson can add one more to that list. After recently returning from Rio, Brazil, marking at the 19th Olympic Games he's attended. Of course, it gives you a chance to root for your own people, et cetera. But it was uh, basically, I think, pretty much uh, the opportunity and uh, knowing what it took to excel and because uh, I, I can't I couldn't do half that stuff. Nelson says it's always been invigorating to watch athletes make a name for themselves during these national games and he got the first chance in 1932 in Los Angeles thanks to his mother. She was able to get four tickets for our family. Being 10 years old my brother who was two years older than me we didn't know what the Olympics were but we soon found out. Embarking on a journey that still continues today. I never felt I'd ever be 94 years old, but uh, I've been very fortunate, and I, I also um, been able to follow what's going on, and uh, it, it, it does kind of create a, a, a situation in your lifetime to say, well, yeah, I've seen that. Now maybe yeah, this, maybe it'll be better this time. And just like his published book called Following the Flame, Nelson made it his dream to attend every Summer Olympics, giving him the chance to travel around the world. He's been to 103 countries. I'm nosy. I would like to see as much of the world as possible. Yeah, and you only go through it once. I figured that out way back then, too. And making friends along the way was always a highlight. The family we stayed with gave this to us when we left. And he still says till this day the games are always exciting. There are more new countries now and people that I'd never heard of before. And uh, there's surprising things that, that happen. They always do. But it wasn't always easy to get that opportunity to go to the games. Nelson remembers what it took to get enough money to attend the 1948 London Games with his friend. If I sold my car, I would go. I had an old Chevrolet, so I sold it to my uncle for $600, and that got us over to London. Overcoming hurdles like these was always like winning a golden medal for this Olympic fan. Everybody asks what's my favorite game, right? I'll tell you what it is. It was in Melbourne, Australia in 1956. It was a delayed honeymoon. Melbourne in 1956, that was my first Olympics. 
And we, we saw weightlifting, we saw swimming, diving. Dee Nelson says she is used to her husband getting quite the attention for being the Guinness World Record holder for attending the most Olympic Games. It was always a hobby she supported from the start. It was special. Every trip is special. And with another game in the books, the Nelsons hope their grandchildren will one day also share this love of the Olympic Games. And when asked about the next one, Nelson says he's planning on it. Whether I'm been around, who knows? I don't know. The good Lord knows I don't. And uh, we're, um, we, we just do what we can do while we can. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. Harry Nelson was also one of the few Americans who got to attend the Moscow Games in 1980. The Nelsons have lived in Torrance for 36 years. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.